Hi, I'm Dave Coleman uh, with Mazda R&D. I'm one of the lead uh, vehicle development engineers on the new uh, 2016 MX-5. Um, this is sort of a, a rare opportunity here for us to see uh, what's underneath the skin on the MX-5, uh, the, uh, the, the, the bare chassis. Um, sort of from a 20-foot view, this layout uh, looks really familiar. This looks almost exactly the same as it did in 1989. Start looking up closely and, of course, everything is completely different and modernized and lighter and more, more effective. But the reason that it looks so similar is because we're trying to do the same thing we, we did in 1989, which is make a car that's really fun to drive and really nimble, really responsive to the driver. And that gives us this basic layout of front engine, rear drive, with the engine as far back as possible, so the polar moment of the car, the ability for it to rotate uh, is as low as possible. Um, it's why we have this, the, this power plant frame here, uh, connecting the, the transmission and diff. Uh, this lets us have sharper throttle response by reducing all the wind up of, of the mounts. Uh, when you get on the gas, typically the nose of the diff here will try to raise up in reaction to the torque it's putting to the wheels. And by connecting it to the transmission, it would have to lift the whole engine up out of the car in order for it to lift. And that makes it a really kind of stable platform and we're able to get torque transmitted straight to the, to the tires. And without that wind up that we would have had with separate mounts, now we can make the throttle response really sharp and not kind of get that rubberiness. Um, the double wishbone suspension here uh, that every Miata has always had, this is really key for a sports car. Not only is it lightweight, uh, low unsprung weight, so it's really supple and, and, and can follow the road surface really well. Um, but the thing you notice about double wishbones, they always have a shorter arm on the top than they do on the bottom. And this is so as the suspension compresses, that short arm swings through a tighter arc and pulls the top of the tire in. So as the body rolls, the outside tire compresses and it keeps the tire upright in the corner. So we can let the body roll quite a bit. Uh, and still not sacrifice any grip because the tire is still always in the ideal position. This is why a double wishbone is really kind of the ideal sports car suspension. The uh, power steering on the new car is a, a electric assist like every modern car, but you see the electric motor is right here on the rack. Um, most of our sedans will have the, the, uh, the assist motor up on the steering column. The reason we put it on the rack it gives you much more direct steering response. Um, there's less torque being transmitted from your, from uh, down the steering column. So the torque that you put in with your hands, the effort that you feel in your hands, that's all the torque that there is in the steering column. When you're putting a lot of torque with the assist motor up on the column, you actually twist that shaft a little bit and, and it deflects a little bit and you lose a little bit of the directness of the steering. So this was really essential to get really direct steering response. Um, we can only really do this on our rear drive cars because the motor, actually there should be more motor here if this was a, a real part. Um, this is so big it doesn't fit with the front wheel drive uh, um, layout, but with the rear wheel drive, we can put it in front of the engine like this. For this car, we have a completely new transmission and diff, um, which really seems like it would have been unnecessary since the old transmission and diff would have fit in here. But by starting over from scratch, we were able to save 15 pounds off the transmission, another 15 pounds off the diff, uh, and also improve the shift feel over the already impressive uh, shift feel of the old car. The shift linkages in this new six-speed transmission are really simple and, and short and direct. So you have a, we're able to get a really light shift effort and still have a really short throw. Um, you notice this looks this is a you know a showpiece that's been all kind of buffed and painted. So it, you you think oh the real one probably should have a bunch of ribs on here and, and things. That's what I thought too until I saw the real transmission. There actually aren't any stiffening ribs on that transmission. Instead of uh, using that old technique to to stiffen. Um, the structure against vibration, they're able to actually vary the thickness of the wall thickness uh, of, of the castings and it, very subtly in different places to adjust the, the, the natural frequency of the part. It's a really it's sort of advanced technique that lets us kind of shave grams here and there uh, to really get the weight down. Um, then if you look at the diff, <coughs> this differential uh, is the same, the, the diff itself and the ring gear is the same size as it was on the previous uh, NC uh, model MX-5, but the housing has been shrunk down around the diff. Um, the front used to be uh, cast iron, now it's aluminum. Uh, it's shorter, and because it's shrunk down so much, you can see this is actually where the bearings that support the diff are. These used to be inside the case. The case was like out to here. And by shrinking it down to where the bolts are actually on the outside, we've just taken a lot of material out that wasn't actually necessary. So we don't have to sacrifice any strength, but we got a lot of weight out of the thing and a lot more efficiency.